Akiak, A Tale from the Iditarod by Robert J. Blake Day one. Akiak knew it. The other dogs knew it too. Some had run it many times and others had never run it at all, but not a dog wanted to be left behind. It was Iditarod race day, 1,151 miles of wind, snow, and rugged trail lay ahead, from Anchorage to Nome. Akiak had led the team through seven races and knew the trail better than any dog. She'd brought them in fifth, third, and second, but had never won. She was 10 years old now. This was her last chance. Now, they must win, now. Crack! The race was underway. One by one, 58 teams took off for Nome. Day two. Come on, old girl, show them how, Mick called. Ha! Mick worked the 16-dog team through Akiak, calling Ha! when she needed the dogs to turn left and Gee! to go right. Mick was the musher, but the team followed the lead dog. The team followed Akiak. Through steep climbs and dangerous descents, icy waters and confusing trails, Akiak always found the safest and fastest way. She never got lost. Day three, Akiak and Squinty, Big Boy and Flinty, Roscoe and the rest of the team pounded across the snow for three days. The dogs were ready to break out, but Mick held them back. There was a right time, but not yet. High in the Alaskan range, they caught up to Willie Ketchum in third place. It was his team that had beaten them by just one minute last year. Following the rules, Willie pulled over and allowed Mick's team to pass. That old dog will never make it, he laughed at Akiak across the biting wind. She'll be waiting for you at Nome, Mick vowed. Day four. High in the Kuskokwim Mountains, they passed tall Tim Brunsey's team and moved into second place. Just after Takotna, Mick's team made its move. They raced by Whistlin' Perry's team to take over first place. Ketchum made his move, too. His team clung to Mix like a shadow. Akiak and her team now had to break trail through deep snow. It was tough going. By the Ofer checkpoint, Akiak was limping. The deep snow had jammed up one of her paw pads and made it sore. Mick tended to her as Ketchum raced by and took first place from them. You can't run on that paw, old girl, Mick said to her. With a day's rest, it'll heal, but the team can't wait here a day. We've got to go on without you. You'll be flown home. Roscoe took Akiak's place at the lead. Day five. By morning, most of the other dog teams had passed through the Ofer checkpoint. The wind was building and the pilot was in a hurry to leave. Akiak tore at the leash as the volunteer brought her to the airplane. Get that dog in, the pilot hollered. I want to get out of here before the storm hits. Akiak jumped and pulled and snapped. All she wanted was to get back on the trail, to run, to win. Then all at once the wind gusted and the plane shifted, and Akiak twisted out of the handler's grip. By the time they turned around, she was gone. Day six, Akiak ran while the storm became a blizzard. She knew that Mick and the team were somewhere ahead of her. The wind took away the scent, and the snow took away the trail. But still, she knew the way. She ran and she ran until the blizzard became a whiteout. Then, she could run no more. While Mick and the team took refuge in Galena seven hours ahead, Akiak burrowed into a snowdrift to wait out the storm. 
in the morning, the mound of snow came alive and out pushed Akiak. Day 7. Word had gone out that Akiak was loose. Trail volunteers knew that an experienced lead dog would stick to the trail. They knew she'd have to come through Unalakleet. She did. Six hours after Mick and the team had left, Akiak padded softly, cautiously into the checkpoint. Her ears alert, her wet nose sniffed the air. The team had been there, she could tell. Suddenly, cabin doors flew open. Five volunteers fanned out and tried to grab her. Akiak zigged around their every zag and took off down the trail. Call ahead to Shock Tulik, a man shouted. Day 8. At Shock Tulik, Mick dropped two more dogs and raced out, still six hours ahead of Akiak. Hungry now, it had been two days since she had eaten. Akiak pounded over the packed trail. For thirst, she drank out of the streams, the ice broken through by the sled teams. She struggled into Shaktulik in the late afternoon. Three men spotted her and chased her right into the community hall, where some mushers were sleeping. Tables overturned and coffee went flying. Then one musher opened the back door and she escaped. Go find them, girl, he whispered. At Koyuk... Akiak raided the musher's discard pile for food, but no one came after her. At Elam, people put food out for her. Almost everybody was rooting for Akiak to catch her team. Day 9. Mick rushed into White Mountain 22 minutes behind Ketchum. Here, the teams had to take an eight-hour layover to rest before the final dash for Nome. Mick dropped Big Boy and put Young Comet in his place. The team was down to eight dogs with 77 miles to go. Akiak pushed on. When her team left White Mountain at 6 p.m., Akiak was running through Golovin, just two hours behind. A crowd lined the trail to watch her run through the town. Day 10 Screaming winds threw bitter cold at the team as they fought their way along the coast. Then, halfway to the checkpoint called Safety, they came upon a maze of snowmobile tracks. The lead dogs lost the trail. Mick squinted through the snow looking for a sign. There, going right, she recognized Ketchum's trail. Gee, she called. Gee, go right. But the dogs wouldn't go. They wandered about, tangling up the lines. Mick straightened them out and worked the team up the hill. At the top, they stopped short. Something was blocking the trail. Akiak! Mick called. She ran to her usual spot at the harness, waiting to be hooked in. Sorry, old girl. Mick hugged her. Rules say I can't put you back in the harness. Get in the sled. But instead, Akiak circled the lead dogs, pushing them and barking. What is it, girl? Mick asked. Akiak ran back down the hill. Mick laughed. <laughs> Ketchum's team had taken the wrong trail. She turned her team around and rushed them down to Akiak, who jumped into the sled. Take us to Nome, Mick called to her. Mick first heard the noise a mile outside of Nome. At first, she wasn't sure what it was. It grew so loud that she couldn't hear the dogs. It was a roar or a rumble. She was so tired after 10 days of mushing, she couldn't tell which. Then she saw the crowd and she heard their cheers. People had come from everywhere to see the courageous dog that had run the Iditarod Trail alone. As sure as if she had been in the lead position, Akiak won the Iditarod race. Nothing was going to stop this dog from winning, Mick told the crowd. Akiak knew it. The other dogs knew it, too. Author's Note The Iditarod race is, above all, a race of the heart for both human beings and dogs. As with any race, however, the Iditarod has rules to ensure fairness and safety for the mushers and the dogs. A musher must stop and sign in at each checkpoint on the trail. In addition, 
A musher must take a 24-hour stop at some point during the race, one eight-hour stop on the Yukon, and one eight-hour stop at White Mountain. The maximum number of dogs a musher can start with is 16. A musher must finish the race with at least five. When one team gets within 50 feet of another, the team behind has the immediate right-of-way upon demand. The musher ahead must stop his dogs for at least one minute or allow the other team to pass. An injured, sick, or fatigued dog may be dropped at a designated dog drop and flown back to Anchorage to be picked up and taken home. A dropped dog may not be put back in harness and may not run next to the team. However, a loose dog found on the trail may be put in the sled and taken to the next checkpoint. I would like to acknowledge the hard work and competence of the Iditarod Trail volunteers. Robert J. Blake.